How many of you have actually sat down and calculated how much protein you're getting in a day? High protein diets are everywhere, but are you actually consuming enough to help your training and racing? Let's talk about it. Protein is important for runners for muscle growth, repair, recovery, sleep, overall health. It's something that you need to make sure that you're getting enough of. When it comes to how much protein you actually need, current recommendations are 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So what that works out to, a 135 pound athlete would can, is about 61 kilograms. 61 kilograms multiplied by 1.6 or 2.2. Each day you wanna be consuming 98 to 134 grams of protein. That's a big swing and that's actually a lot more protein than runners are getting in. So if you're on a recovery day or if you're not doing any high intensity work or that like strength training, you can be on the lower end. If you're doing that high intensity work or if you're recovering from an injury or you're training multiple hard days in a row, you definitely want to be on that higher end. I know a lot of people get worried thinking if I'm consuming this much protein, am I going to get big and bulky? And that's not the case. Adding in more protein is only going to make your body faster and stronger. You'd really have to make a concerted effort in order to grow those muscles and get bigger and stronger. Did you know that runners actually need and use protein while you're running? About two to 5% of your energy comes from the oxidation of those amino acids or the proteins. Uh, if you're running at about 75% of your VO2 max for 60 minutes, you'll burn about 12 grams of protein. If you're running longer or if you're running at a fasted state or doing that low carbohydrate training, you can burn up to boost that up to like 10% of your energy coming from protein. So it's really important that you understand that it's not just carbohydrates that you're burning and that you want to replace that protein that you're using for energy so that your muscles can grow. I'm asked a lot if it matters how much or when you're consuming your protein. It absolutely does. Regular consumption at regular intervals throughout the day is best for muscle protein synthesis, best for absorption, best for overall body composition. While I'm on body composition, protein has a greater thermic effect than carbohydrates and fats. So that means that it takes more energy to process and burn those proteins than it does for carbs and fats. So if you're working on body composition, that will help. It also has a very satiating quality to it, so it will help you feel fuller, longer. A few more really important points about timing. About an hour or so before one of those hard interval, high intensity or strength sessions, you wanna consume 10 to 20 grams of protein with a little bit of carbohydrates mixed in there. After your session, so within two hours or so of training, you wanna consume about 25 to 35 grams of protein to really, really stimulate muscle protein synthesis and repair and rebuild those muscles. A third one that people forget about a lot is that pre-sleep protein ingestion. Studies have shown that overnight muscle protein synthesis is increased. It helps with sleep, it helps with better waking training. So adding in 20 to 30 grams of protein before bed with about 15 grams of carbohydrates, that combination will help show greater improvements, have a better night's sleep, and get you running stronger. Let's go over a few whole food excellent sources of protein. Eggs, chicken, turkey, beef, bison, fatty fish, lentils or legumes, milk, nut milk if you don't do dairy, yogurt or kefir, all great ways and super solid whole foods with vitamins and minerals that are important to have in your diet and boost those protein levels. You might find that you need a protein powder, so you can do a plant-based protein powder with added BCAAs, or you can do an animal-based protein powder Whey protein is best, especially after a workout session, so you wanna look for incorporating that into your diet as well to meet those protein needs. I've thrown a lot of numbers your way, giving you protein requirements, but you might be wondering, how do I fit all of this in during my day? So I thought it would be helpful if I kind of broke down my day meal by meal. Um, I am a, I do animal and plant-based, but I'm going to make sure that I throw some strictly plant-based options in there for those of you that don't do animal 
products or proteins. All right, breakfast could be anything from a couple eggs or some ground turkey mixed with some black beans, veggies, or you could go the smoothie route and do a plant-based protein powder or animal-based protein powder mixed in with some healthy fats and carbohydrates. For a snack, I like to do uh, around 10 or 11 in the morning. That could be either some edamame, you could do a glass of nut milk, or potentially like a stick of string cheese. Those all have some protein in there. For lunch, I like to do a big salad with potentially some grilled chicken or fish. You could even do a tuna or salmon sandwich. An afternoon snack, you could do some hummus and veggies almonds and an apple or a protein bar. And then for dinner, any of those healthy fatty fish, uh, you could do a bean, maybe like a three bean and quinoa mix for those of you that are plant-based. And then pre-bed, uh, you could do a yogurt or kefir, you could do a protein shake, all kinds of options. You just wanna make sure that you're throwing them in regularly throughout the day and at the quality or quantity that you want. As athletes, we're constantly on the go, and to meet those protein requirements, a protein powder is an excellent option. I wanna make sure that you're choosing the right one. So I've done a super video on how to select your protein powders, what kinds are important, listed some of my favorites, and everything you wanna look for so that you know you're getting the right one and the best one for you. Click that link here and you can watch it.